Okay, so this is uh, Miguel. Uh, over to you. Hello, my name is Miguel, and I'm going to present uh, some advances of my research, which is tentatively uh, entitled Skills Assessments for Salsa Dancers Through the Space Space Representation. And the, the first question to ask is why human activity uh, recognition is a challenging task. We have different, because we have different types of activities to recognize, as well as many different motion capture systems to use. And also it's important to uh, mention that we have also different time domains for the time series analysis and the classification algorithm that we have to apply. So the idea here is to use the time series from the inertial sensors but, and treat it as a nonlinear dynamic system by using the state space representation. In this, in this research, we can see different pathologies of, of users. Uh, this is another important research in which Jordan and others presented um, uh, the, this uh, concept of reconstructed state space in order to classify different activities such as walking, running, and biking, which are uh, come from using non-accelerometer uh, data. Another similar research is from SAMA and others in which they use uh, gay identification as a biometric uh, metric for, for different volunteers by using the same, uh, the, the same um, approach of the state space representation. This is another important research that I'm working on, which is well done, that I, I mentioned it, is the measuring the dexterity of tennis players by using hypercylindrical phase space, in which they measure the expertise of, 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 of how they, the tennis players hit, hit the, 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 the ball. So the main three questions for my research are, how the reconstructed state space can quantify the dexterity of human body activities. Is the take insurance the best tool to quantify human activities in terms of their reconstructed state space? And which concept for nonlinear dynamics can be used for human activity recognition? And the main idea of my research is to use the time series as a one-dimensional um, uh, one dimensional data, then it's converted to n-dimensional data by using the take insurance. And then it's reduced by using the PCA algorithm. algorithm. And the take insurance used two uh, parameters, which are M for the embedding dimension and tau for the embedding delay. And those, are, those parameters are quite important to uh, unfold the manifold and to obtain the maximum uh, information of the, the, of the signal. And in order to obtain, to use, to propose the the minimal embedding parameters we are using this cow method in which e, e values e, e one values are used for using the for obtaining the minimum embedding parameter and e two values are for for the for distinguish between noisy and 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 uh, deterministic signal so this is the general idea uh, collecting data from the inertial sensors apply the taken theorems and then reduce the, the, the dimensionality by using the PCA algorithm. And we are collecting data by using this uh, cheaper sensor, a cheaper inertial measurement unit, which has accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. And it samples the data by using every, every 15 hertz. And I'm using a C++ class in order to collect the data. And the first experiment that we are performing right now is to ask participants to dance seven beginner salsa steps, and they wear the sensors. And, and I'm going to show you use the, the step one and step two for, for, for the results of the uh, experts dancer. And so here we, we have uh, the E1 values, which are to use to obtain the minimal dimensionality of the taken theorem, which is, for example, we can see that that the values that are almost, uh, well, the, the plots are similar, with, and we can see that the, the values for M are equal to, to 10, because, because once the, this plot is um, 
it's not changed we can see that we can say that this that is the minimum value and in the case of the e2 values those are for uh, just uh, test the um, the randomness or deterministic uh, deterministic signal that is, is the is the signal deterministic or random so for example in the case in the case of this signal is more more random than this one which is more deterministic according to the the chaos uh, chaos method and then then by choosing these parameters we we apply it the pc algorithm <coughs> So we can see, for example, in this table that the maximum, the highest values of variances are just for the magnetometer data in the y and z, z axis for the experts, non-dancers, non, non and intermediate. So this is the, the main important result of my research because we can see at least visually that the experts, intermediate, <coughs> and non-dancer has different, uh, like, like level of, of dexterity in the step one and the step two. But, but the problem here is that we can see different, like we can apply different embedded parameters to obtain different manifolds in order to measure the dexterity of, of users. So, so that, that, is the, that, that, that is the thing that I'm working, working right now. So the general view of my research is to collect data from using body sensor networks, apply the take theorems, and then use another concepts from nonlinear dynamics, such as Lyapunov exponents, Poincaré maths, or Hinnom maths, and then use some machine algorithm, algorithms to classify the, this, this theory. So that's all. Thank you. OK, any questions? <laughs> well, we're going to get a demonstration now. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I haven't recorded the participants, but it will be next time to show you some videos. <laughs> I mean, because he's collecting expert, I mean, I'm co supervising his PhD, because he's collecting expert and novice dancers, there's no excuse. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. So if you want to get your...